Welcome everyone. In this episode, we are going to discuss about the third chapter of science textbook of NCERT of grade eight, which is about the world of fibers. The name of the chapter is synthetic fibers and plastics. Here we will talk about the various types of fibers, their uses, application in daily life, and we will talk about plastics. At last, we will conclude with the discussion about the four Rs. So let us begin our chapter. First of all, to know what we will learn in this chapter, let us take a look at the contents. Here we will talk about raw materials and finished materials. That is, what are raw materials and what are finished materials. Then we will come to the point: what is fiber and the types of fibers. There is basically to uh, classify fibers. There is actually two types of fibers. That is the natural fibers and the artificial fibers. The artificial fiber is also termed as synthetic fibers, which is the main point of this episode. Next, we will take a look at the life cycle of silk moth. After that, we will take a look at how silk is prepared from the silk moth. That is the cocoons of the silk moth. Then we will talk about plastics. You already know what are plastics. but we will come to the classification of plastics and details of plastics then we will talk about the features of plastics which makes them unique though they are harmful for the environment but they have some unique features which helps us next we will talk about the four rs the four rs are reduce reuse recycle and recover we already knew that there are, there are three rs that is the reduce reuse and recycle but here we will include one more that is the re- recover we will also discuss them in great details so let us begin the chapter first of all let us know what are raw materials a raw material also known as a feedstock unprocessed material or primary commodity is a basic material that is used to produce goods finished products energy or intermediate materials that are feedstock for future finished products what this means is that a raw material is a basic material that is the primary material from which secondary or tertiary or the final product can be obtained the next point says as feedstock the term connotes these materials are bottleneck acids and are required to produce other products as i said before that is if there is no raw materials we cannot get the secondary material not the tertiary material not the final material so the so the most important is the primary material or the raw material primary material and raw material are the same thing if there is no raw material we can't get the finished material or the intermediate products the next point is a, of an example an example of this is crude oil we are very familiar with crude oil crude oil is a raw material used to produce a variety of products that means all types of products including all types of furniture even in the adjoining picture you can see various types of raw materials which are used to produce various kinds of different products now that you know what are raw materials let us talk about finished materials in textile manufacturing finishing refers to the process that converts the woven or knitted cloth into a usable material and more specific to be more specific and more precise to any process performed after dyeing the yarn or fabric to improve the look performance or feel that is the hand hand means feel of the finished textile or clothing the precise meaning depends on the context we are using it for that is it depends on where we are using it some finishing techniques such as bleaching and dyeing are applied to yarn before it is woven that means it is applied before the fiber is woven while others are applied to the gray cloth gray cloth means the cloth we are making in by weaving weaving and knitting gray cloth directly after it is woven or knitted that means after it is woven and after it is knitted we directly apply the bleaching and dyeing technique that is the finishing process some finishing techniques such as fulling fulling is a finishing technique which is used in hand weaving for centuries others such as mercerization mercerization is a special type of finishing techniques used in, to produce finished materials mercerization are by products of the industrial revolution that is not that they are not the main products they are the by products of the industrial revolution we have already learned what are by products and main products of a reaction in class 7 so they are the by products of industrial revolution next let us talk about what are fibers and the types of fibers 
a fiber is a single and elongated piece of material which is similar to threads but they are not exactly threads they are similar to threads fibers are of two types as i told before generally they are classified into two types the very premature classification that is the natural fibers that is wool silk etc also we can include examples like cotton jute those are also natural fibers actually natural what are natural fibers as the name from the name only name itself we can understand natural fibers if we divide into nature and fibers nature that that is the fibers which are obtained from nature are termed as natural fibers now wool silk are obtained from animals we know mainly the animals body is made up of proteins so they are also termed as protein fiber silk is generally made from the protein named as fibroin whereas we know plants contain cellulose that's why we can't digest the plants directly whereas cows can do we have learned it in the nutrition in animals chapter in class 7 the rumination process there cellulose plants contain a specific thing called cellulose which which is the basic material of the cotton and jute that means they are cell they are also termed as cellulose fibers because they are obtained from plants and plants contain cellulose now let us talk about synthetic fibers what are what are synthetic fibers synthetic fibers or artificial fibers or man made fibers whatever we say are the fibers which are man made that is we use the natural things but we cannot say them natural fibers because uh, we do not use them directly that means directly we are taking them and using them not like that we are adding something to it reacting them with other substances to form a final product which is then termed as the fiber so as man made steps are involved synthetic processes are involved so these types of fibers are called as synthetic fibers let us take a look at some examples nylon rayon also polyester polyester actually ester ester is a combination of alcohol and an acid and many many poly means many many esters formed together is polyester we will discuss about it that is what which uh, which alcohol and which uh, acid uh, is the combination makes the poly polyester we will discuss about it uh, while talking about synthetic fibers but polyester is an example of synthetic fibers now let us take a look at some important facts of silk generally funny fact a silk rope is stronger than an equally thick metal wire that means both the diameter of the silk rope and the metal wire will be same and if we take them of the same diameter and of the same length then we can, we will be able to figure out that the silk rope is actually stronger than the metal wire we will get surprised because we think metal as a very strong uh, substance yes it is strong su substance but silk rope is much stronger than it the cultivation of silk is called as sericulture it is very important uh, short questions may come that what is the cultivation of silk called it is called sericulture now let us talk about some natural fibers the first one being cotton we all know cotton cotton is a soft fluffy staple fiber that grows in a bowl or protective case around the seeds of the cotton plant of the genus gossypium in the mallow family malvaceae the fiber is almost pure cellulose it contains nothing is almost pure cellulose though it has some mixture of other substances but generally 99% of it is cellulose under natural conditions the cotton bolls will increase the dispersal of the seeds the plant is a shrub native to the tropical and subtropical regions around the world what are tropical and subtropical regions the regions close to the equator that is 5 degree north to 5 degree south including the equator is termed as the tropical region and what is the subtropical region in the north and northern hemisphere that from the 30 degree north to the 5 degree north that is from the end of the tropical region in the northern hemisphere till 30 degree north 5 degree north to 30 degree north is termed as the tropical region in the northern hemisphere whereas vice versa in the southern hemisphere that is 5 degree south to 30 degree south is uh, called as the subtropical region so americas africa egypt and india falls under this tropical and subtropical region and so cotton grows here cotton generally grows grows in a type of soil called as the black soil or the clay soil the next natural fiber we will talk about is the jute jute is a long soft shiny vegetable fiber that can be spun into coarse strong threads 
It is produced primarily from plants in the genus Corcorus, which was at once classified with the family Tilici and more recently with Malvici. There is the same family of the cotton we have already discussed, it is Malvici. Before it was classified into the family of Tilici, but now we have the, now scientists have figured out to be in, with the family of Malvici. The primary source of the fiber is Corcorus olitorius, but it is considered inferior to Corcorus capsularis. Jute is the name of the plant. Jute itself is the name of the plant. There is nothing else. Jute is the name of the plant or fiber used to make burlap, hessian, or gunny cloth. We have often find out that jute. Uh, jute ropes are there in their home for tying various things. They are actually very strong, not as much as silk rope, but they are actually very strong. The next one is about the silk. Now silk is called the queen of the fiber. Silk is a natural protein fiber. I, as I have already told uh, in the types of fibers, classification of fibers. Why it is protein fiber? Because it is obtained from animals. Animals generally are uh, uh, consists of proteins. Proteins are used to build their, uh, I mean, muscle cells and bodies. In generally, humans, I'm talking about muscle cells, because silkworm doesn't have any muscle cells actually, but their body is made up of proteins because they are also animals. So silk is a natural protein fiber, whereas cotton and jute are cellulose fibers. Though it was termed as vegetable fiber in case of jute, but they are also cellulose fibers. The protein fiber of silk is composed mainly of fibroin, as I told before and is produced by certain insect larva, generally the silkworm, to form cocoons. What are cocoons? We will discuss it during the life cycle of silkworm. The best known silk is obtained from the cocoons of the larva of the mulberry silkworm, Bombyx mori. It is the scientific name. We must always put an underline while writing it because to represent scientific name, we must put an underline. Bombyx mori reared in captivity. Sericulture, as I told the process of rearing silkworms, the shimmering appearance of the silk is due to the silk triangular prism like structure of the silk fiber, which allows silk cloth to refract incoming light at different angles. That means they deviate the light at light rays at different angles, thus producing different colors. Uh, so this was our end of the uh, three important uh, natural fibers, though we have not discussed about wool because we have already learned about wool in class 7. Now let us talk about artificial fibers. The first one is rayon. Now rayon is a manufactured fi fiber. It is, though we cannot say it completely as artificial fiber because it is obtained from natural cellulose, but then also it is an artificial fiber because it undergoes some chemical processing to come out as a finished product. So we call it as artificial fibers, though they are not fully artificial fibers. We will talk about it. Rayon is a manufactured fiber made from natural sources such as wood and agricultural products. What is agriculture? The science of rearing that is the various kinds of plants for human consumption, medicine, fruits, vegetables etc is known as agriculture. It is also science. It is also a branch of science. Agricultural products that are regenerated as cellulose fibers. The many types and grades of rayon can imitate the feel and texture of natural fibers such as silk wool, cotton and linen. So it is very difficult to find out among uh, silk, wool, cotton and rayon that which one is rayon. Because they all, uh, they can, uh, they are of the similar grade that is they can mix up with silk, wool, cotton etc. Rayon is manufactured from natural cellulose as I told in the beginning and hence is not considered to be synthetic fully. Technically the term synthetic fiber is reserved for fully synthetic fibers like the ny nylon, uh, polyester etc. In manufacturing terms, rayon is classified as a fiber formed by regenerating natural mater materials into a usable form, though it involves some chemical treatment of rayon, which is not included here. The next artificial fiber is the nylon. It is a completely full uh, artificial fiber. Now what are nylon? What is nylon? Let us talk about nylon. Nylon is a generic designation for a family of synthetic polymers based on aliphatic or semi-aromatic polyamides. Nylon is a thermoplastic silky material. Nylon stockings. Let us talk about nylon stockings. What are nylon stockings? When they came? Why was they used? Why were they used? And how much strong they are? What is their strength? Let us talk about all these. Nylon stockings first came in the market in the year 1940, 80 years ago. 
they sold 5 million pairs on the first day in indian in indian uh, mode of saying in numbers it is actually 50 lakhs but if we take the international system of trading as numbers it is 5 million pairs on the first day that means six zero follow, six zeros followed after five during the second world war nylon was produced nylon produce was restricted to only parachutes and cords nothing else of nylon could be produced only parachutes and cord, cords why only parachutes and cords were used because during the world war 2 the uh, the soldiers used them during the flight during the flight uh, battle parachutes and cords were used so it was restricted in second during second world war it was restricted only to parachutes and cords nylon ropes are stronger than steel wear and can be used for rock climbing the next one is acrylic acrylic is a transparent thermoplastic homopolymer known more, known more commonly by the trade name plexiglass the material is similar to polycarbonate in that it is suitable for use as an impact resistant alternative to glass now acrylic is also known as fake or false wool why is it so because they exhibit the similar properties to that of wool let us talk about the features of acrylic now it has great resistance to sun sunlight it has resistance to shrinkage that means if you if you just compress it and then leave it as it is it will come back to its original shape that means it has resistance to shrinkage it does not shrink it has good elasticity you can you can elasticate it you can pull it in either ways that is both vertically and horizontally it has good elasticity it is generally colored before being turned into a fiber very important point it is colored before turned into a fiber generally it has low moisture absorption that is it, 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 it absorbs low amount of moisture from the environment and it gives soft and warm feel it blends well with natural fibers like cotton wool etc generally more with wool as i told before that's why it is also known as false wool, false wool or fake wool now this is about polyester now polyester is composed of two terms as i told before poly plus ester poly means many and ester means an mix uh, a compound formed by mixing uh, an alcohol with an acid so polyester is a synthetic fiber derived from coal air water and petroleum developed in the 20th century laboratory polyester fibers are formed from a chemical reaction between an acid and alcohol as i said before so what is the what is the alcohol used here that is the ethylene glycol it's the alcohol and what acid is used is the terephthalic acid both of these combine to form polyethylene terephthalate which is the basic component of polyester the adjoining picture you can see a picture of polyester shown now we have talked about various types of uh, natural fibers and artificial fibers there is cotton jute silk rayon nylon polyester acrylic etc now let us talk about the life cycle of silk moth uh, female moth lays many tiny eggs those turn for those uh, tiny little eggs hatches out and forms larva we already have though we have already talked about the life cycle of silk moth in class 7 <coughs> sorry sorry we have already talked about the life cycle of silk moth in class 7 let us revisit it who remembers we have who, who says we have remembered it or forgot it so the tiny eggs hatches into larva so this larva uh, caterpillars feed on mulberry leaves for about these larva caterpillars feed on mulberry leaves for about three to four weeks we know all of these things each of them spins a cocoon around itself what is cocoon that cocoon is actually the silk filament rubbed, uh, that is coiled, coiled around itself the caterpillar changes into a pupa inside the cocoon that is the, when they change into pupa inside the cocoon that stage is called the pupating stage and after some period of certain period of period of time they come out in the form of adult moth these adult moth again lays egg not the not the male adult moth the female adult moth the female adult moth again lays eggs and this cycle of larva cocoon adult moth eggs continues this type this cycle is known as the life cycle of silk moth now let us talk about how silk is prepared eggs of silkworm is incubated till they hatch into larva 
at this time the size of the larva is about quarter of an inch an inch is equal to 2.5 cm approximately 2.5 cm and, and 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 the and, and and the size of the larva in this case is quarter of an inch that is just one fourth part of an inch so if we calculate uh, the approximate value it will be 2.5 by 4 uh, so let us uh, we will calculate this it is not very important so it is about quarter of an inch once the larva hatches they are placed under a gauze layer gauze layer is shiny layer shiny layer very shiny layer and fed huge number of mulberry leaves huge huge number of mulberry leaves actually they eat 50000 of its initial plant weight we will discuss about it in the later points so they eat huge number of mulberry leaves during this time they shed their skin not once not not twice not thrice but four times this they shed their skin four times can you think of the number four we are thinking at four as small number but shedding their skin four times is not an easy uh, thing to think of the larva which feeds on the mulberry leaves produce the finest of the finest silks that means the ooh, mulberry leaves are actually the uh, we, we have already uh, we already know that uh, there is a type of uh, uh, what to say uh, there is a type of silk that is a mulberry silk it is the finest silk it's it's shiny it's comfortable to wear so the larva which feeds on the mulberry leaves produce this type produce this mulberry silk and it is the finest of the finest silk that is it has greatest quality very nice quality and the states producing this mulberry um, silk is uh, in india is uh, the, in the southern parts it's karnataka tamil nadu kerala uh, in the northern parts jammu kashmir um, some parts of west bengal etc now the silk worm changes its color and is ready to spin a silk cocoon we have uh, talked about the silk cocoon in the part of life cycle of silk moth it is ready to form the silk cocoon a single pupa can produce 15 meters of fiber per minute think 15 meters of fiber per minute it forms a silk cocoon in 3 to 8 days and this period is called the pupating period as i told as i discussed before a cocoon can produce 1 km of silk filament generally it is it varies between 600 to 900 Though sometimes uh, in rare cases it becomes one thousand meters, that is one kilometer of silk filament. The cocoon is then treated with boiling water. It is seriously dangerous because it not only affects the uh, silk worm; they die, but also it uh, various types of scars are formed on the hands of those who are doing it. So it is a very risky task. I do not tell you to try this at home at all. It takes ten kg of silk, or ten kg of silk. So we think that. near about 9 kg of silk should be produced from 10 kg of silk cocoon but no 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 to our great surprise it's just 1 kg 1 kg of fine silk is produced from 10 kg of silk cocoon so think how many uh, how many silk worms must sacrifice to produce 1 kg of fine silk now uh, we are at the very ending point of our chapter uh today's chapter that is synthetic fibers and plastics uh so synthetic fibers and plastics so now let us talk about plastics plastics are a wide range of synthetic or semi synthetic organic compounds that are malleable and so can be molded into solid objects we know that we, from uh, plastic is uh, we see plastic bottles so but they were not in the same form they were they were molded into that form from the plastics from a uh, from a large amount of plastic it was molded into a plastic bottle but remember one thing those plastic bottles which are used by us once should not be used twice or thrice because they are very dangerous and they can even lead to cancer so we should not use those pl- those plastic bottles we should use them once and we can reuse them in some ways we will talk about it during the concept of four hours or otherwise you should trust them and throw them away so that other people can reuse it now what is plasticity plasticity is a general property of all materials which can deform irreversibility without breaking but in the class of moldable polymers what are polymers by the way polymers are formed from monomers actually monomers means single single piece of uh, what to say fibers and polymers are uh, lot of monomers put together moldable polymers this occurs to such a degree that means a huge degree that their actual name derives from this specific ability uh now let's see the classification of plastics there are actually two types of plastics to be precise thermoplastics and thermosetting plastics we should remember these names these are very important for exams uh now what are thermoplastics 
plastics that get deformed deformed means that changes their shape after the application of heat again and again we can apply it thousands of times but their shape may change every time the, that type of plastics are called as thermoplastics for example pvc polyvinyl chloride we have already heard about uh, things like pvc pipes those are composed of this pvc polyvinyl chloride the other category is the thermosetting plastics what are thermosetting plastics plastics that do not get deformed after the application of heat once that is in the first stage that means when they are molded for the first time after that if we apply heat they will not change the shape they will remain in the same shape that type of those plastics which follow this policy are termed as the thermosetting plastics let us take a look at some examples the examples are bakelite and melamine now what are bakelite and melamine those bakelite and melamine if we take take look at closely if we take a look at the switchboards present in our homes uh, in the circuitry and also to the handles of the that means the utensils uh, those plastics which are used there are bakelite and melamine now features of plastics this is very important actually features of plastics uh, let us see some important features of plastics we cannot include all features because there is lots and lots of features of plastics you can go and surf it on google or any other web browser you are using so some important features of plastics are plastics does not break now you may say some plastics do break but actually to be very precise all plastics do not break they may get molded or change their shape but they do not break actually all plastics do not break it is lighter we know it oh, plastics are lighter and cheaper yes it is obviously cheaper than the other metal containers and whatever we are using it is easy to handle it is easy to handle that means uh, we can we can uh, carry it from one place to another very easily now the next point is something very important it does not react with food water or air neither it do, neither does it react with food nor air nor water so it does not react with food water or air so we can store food food water actually uh, food water in it uh, very safely actually i have not said air we cannot store air actually we do we store air in the container i don't think so so we can store uh, food water etc in, the, in, the, in the, this type of container very easily now the next point is chemicals can be stored in it now suppose you store a chemical in a uh, iron container or any type of metal container now we know that metals are very much reactive in nature so if we store chemicals in it they might react with the metal and form some other types of elements or compounds which we do not want at all so to prevent this from happening we can store them in plastic container neither the plastics will get melted by the chemical reaction nor it will perform any chemical reaction with the chemical so it is very safe to store the chemicals in the plastic container it is lightweight and durable as i said before it is lightweight and durable that means it lasts for a long large amount of time if you if you take a plastic bottle and dig it in the soil and after 400 years if you come and dig the soil in that place, same place you may find the plastic bottle uh, with no change maybe some soil will get inside and some some soil will, uh, will be stored on the top but no no nothing else will happen though you may not survive for 400 years but this is fact that plastics can be plastics don't get decomposed they may be in soil for 400 years and nothing might happen to them now why 400 and not and not something uh, no and i have not exceeded the amount of years this is because after that plastics will start having some other types of reactions happening to them 400 years the amount of 400 years uh, and till the amount 400 years they will uh, generally till the amount of 400 years nothing will happen to them but after that some changes might take place in them now plastics are poor conductor of heat and light i have not used the term insulator now when we are growing in classes we should not use the term insulator instead we should replace it with poor conductors now why why you should replace insulators with poor conductors why what are the disadvantages of using insulators well see if we pass electricity of high voltage through plastic it may conduct electricity that means we have to provide much more force we have to provide much more electrical force to make plastic a conductor so it is poor conductor not insulator it may conduct electricity all substances are conductors of electricity no substances are poor uh, insulators we we must tell them as poor conductors we are at the concluding part 
so let us conclude our session by using by the topic of four hours now as i said before the four hours are reduce reuse recycle and recover so let us talk about them each of them in details now first of all first one is the reduce reduce is to is to limit the amount of waste we create in the first place in the very primitive stage we must reduce the amount of waste we create this includes buying products with less packaging yes so uh, we must in our part we must do as our level best to reduce the amount of waste we create we should we should reuse or recycle it we will talk about reuse and recycling in the next part so reusing reuse means to use the something again again and again that you know, that you normally throw away because uh, as i talked uh, took an example of plastic bottles which you buy from stores the, uh, instead of throwing the, those plastic bottles or reusing it to store water we should not store water as i told before it may it is very actually very dangerous so we can use them for various crafts for making various useful things but we should not throw that away because plastics are harmful for the soil and the environment now the next is recycling recycling means the product goes through a mechanical process to change its form this only is recommended when reducing and reusing are not possible by us then only you should send the product for the recycling then last step is to recover recover is to conduct waste into resources that is electricity heat compost fuel etc through thermal and biological means that is geothermal energy we have talked about hydroelectricity these are some examples of recovering of the waste to into electricity and heat compost fuel etc resource recovery occurs after reduce reuse and recycle have been attempted so it is the last and the final process of the four hours so this was our session for today hope you enjoyed if you have any doubts please post it in the comment section thank you all please like share and subscribe my channel also do not forget to press the bell icon to get the latest notifications and if you have any doubts and any questions regarding you can post it in the comment section thank you